Well, I've lo thought about it for a long time, and but what what could I do that has not hasn't been done? But we've had Carl's and Goldricks, and I wanted something different. And here we are, historic city. Uh, wait a minute. We've got the train station. We've got the river, and we've got the Purina Tower. So that was kind of my thought of what we, I could do. The issue is that we needed to create the Fredericksburg skyline as a silhouette. Thank goodness, not too much detail. So we found a historic uh, photograph from the Civil War era. The key thing was we wanted to make sure we had the three steeples, and this picture does have that. So it gives us a decent skyline. That's pretty easy to just um, trace or, uh, you know, uh, transfer over. So you've got an exact replica size mm -hmm. there. But then you have to figure out how to turn this, what, maybe six inches into 112 inches. We opted to go with uh, three grids up because it's really not very high. I don't know how many across. But then you had to figure it out. So we had to figure out it's every 15 and a quarter inches. So you've got your long, you know, um, yardstick and you're marking up 15 and a quarter, 30 and a half, and then moving it 15 and a quarter, 30 and a half. Then you literally go in and you draw what does that square look like, right? And you just sit there and draw it out. First, you draw it very, very lightly. <laughs> then you step back and you look at the whole thing and you go, okay, we can lock that one in. And then yeah. you draw some firm lines. So now what's happening is I'm cutting it out because this is in essence a stencil that they will use to jigsaw out a piece of wood to be part of the window. We had seen a number of other examples of skylines that were not accurate. Like right away we looked at it and went, that building's not there, or what is that? No, that building's attached to the wrong steeple. That one belongs over there with this other steeple. So um, we went looking for a historically accurate photo, and we, th we reckon we found a decent one. Um, obviously, is it today's skyline? No, but also the window's not today. Um, so the windows period, this is a little before the window. I don't think much changed in the skyline between what, 19 or 1862 and the 1920s when we're doing the window. Mm -hmm. 1920, because uh, I thought it was a good era since the train station was built in 1910 and remodeled or added on to in 1917. Purina Tower was built in 1919. So therefore, uh, I picked 19 1920, which was the beginning of the uh, Roaring Twenties. Seemed like a good time, and with the clothing, everything was a lot more fun to do. The characters, the costumes have all been, I pulled out my costume books and started looking at clothing of 1920s, 1919, 1918. Of course, some people, you know, they're still wearing clothes from 1918 or something like that, but we're not into the flapper era. We're okay. at the beginning of this this time period. The Fredericksburg Heritage Library yeah. came to the rescue with an image of going like, okay, you've got a choice between the freelance and the Daily Star because the papers hadn't merged until 1926. Oh, okay. And so, which one do you want to go with? And I'm like, well, I think probably the freelance is going to resonate more than the Daily Star, even though that's Mm -hmm. And so that was a copy. The front and back of that little paper is actually that day's paper. The Purina Tower is just terrific that, that, that you were able to include that. Well, we found pictures from Hamilton Palmer of what it looked like uh, because the lettering and the squares uh, were there and which are not there now. So, and I wanted to go back as, and be as pure as we could. I mean, it's the train station, so you've got to have a trunk and you've got to be able to look like you could, you know, carry that as a trunk. Um, I happened to find this little box, I don't know, Hobby Lobby or something like that, so it was easy because it already had an attachment. But other thing, these two had their own attachments. Yeah. But they didn't, you can see we painted those on, right? And all those dots are painted on. They're not actual studs, which is what you would have. Um, so we googled historic train stations and uh, historic, um, uh, you know, suitcases piled up and went, what do they look like? Well, in the 20s, there were a lot of sort of linen-y looks. So what is that, right? like, what, where did you get that? Oh, well, <laughs> the base, all of these ones, the base of these is floral foam. 
And then I actually went to thrift shops and um, junk stores and found fabric scraps or old suitcases that I could cut up. I think this one was uh, an old, uh, like one of these briefcases somebody was giving away and it was like two bucks or something. So I cut them all out. Um, the trick with these actually, the most complicated thing with these was the, um, the trim around them. They're, they're really hard to get this stuff to stick on. It was finding yeah. glue that would stick to this leather braiding and you had to find the right dimension because there was lots of stuff out there that was thicker or bigger. Um, so yeah, and of course it all has to be to scale. Um, and then at the last minute, somebody said, well, you need a little hat box. Yes. And I went, sure, because that's easy. So this is actually a pill bottle cap that we've covered in one of those fabrics. Um, I kind of tried to make a couple of them look a little bit worn because they would be, you know, used or whatever. Um, so there you go. We've got a stack of trunks and uh, luggage. Okay, so it takes as much work to make a hat for a doll as it would be to make the hat for a real person. It's four hours to make a hat. Four hours? Four hours. You have to, you have to boil the felt. So I boil the felt, I put the felt in a little baggie and with water in the microwave mm -hmm. and boil it. Yeah. Get it really, really hot, get it out, and then I'd have to put it over a mold. And so I, I'd have like a Dijon mustard cup and I put it over there and rub it and, and let it dry that way. And then, and that's overnight that, so I'm not counting, so that was it. Then let that dry overnight and then mix a, a, a solution, a stabilizing thing of a Mod Podge, which is kind of like a, kind of like an Elmer's glue, but it's a, and put that on it so it was stiff and cut that out and then sew this all in and glue this all together and mold this thing to do that, and you're making it just like you would make, you know, a real person's hat. Yeah. And the gloves are worse. <laughs> <laughs> On the clothing and the figures, Linda did research of 1920, what the clothes looked like. Uh, clothes were much more uh, somber in uh, day wear. Uh, and she found and did an amazing job, I feel, on the clothing and the hair and the shoes and the skates. Because we make it all. We don't just go out and buy stuff. And what we do buy, we try and find locally at the craft stores here or any store that might have something like it. And very very little is, have we gone uh, like to Amazon and gotten something. It's, it's pretty much local, but we build everything. Well, and you, we th these are always known as Bob Whittingham's windows, but you're always you always quickly add, you've got a pretty special team that helps you build these. Well, I have Linda who does the clothing and all these details that are so wonderful and Tom Rainey who does the construction. And to see Tom, a carpenter, and he's putting on 1,500 shingles on the one building, it's amazing to watch. Do one on the right, higher. And then this one would be just a little, good? yeah. Uh -huh. And then this one on the left and down a little bit. Too far down. Good. And finding stuff uh, like how do we do the brickwork on the train station? Called Creative Color, they went over, they photographed it, and the brick size is one quarter scale, just like everything else, and it's the exact color that's on the train station right now. That's the thing, everything is to scale, it's so precise. It's to scale, we've added some things like the drain pipes and the gutters, some things just to uh, fill in to make it look a little more interesting. But most everything is pretty accurate, as accurate as we can get. It's another great, it's another great Christmas present to the city of Fredericksburg by you, Bob. Thank you. You're more than welcome. I'll look forward to doing it next year. And yes, I am not, no, I'm not retiring like some people have said. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll see you next year.